fellow Kenyans, the last two weeks have been a difficult time for us as a country where Kenyans have regrettably lost lives, many have been injured, property destroyed, and our institutions, especially constitutional institutions, attacked. Once again, I extend my deepest condolences to those who unfortunately lost their lives. One life, as we all know, lost is a life too many. To the mothers, fathers, siblings, relatives, and friends of those who lost their lives, my deepest sympathies and condolences to you all. Equally, to the many others who are injured and recuperating, I wish them quick recovery. The government of Kenya will support all those who've lost their lives and those who've been injured. As a nation, we are finally discussing issues. We are not discussing tribes, personalities, or political formations. But rather, we are discussing issues that affect each and every one of us. Issues of taxation, debt, budget, corruption, the cost of living, unemployment, and opportunities for all Kenyans, especially our young people. If you go back on my Twitter account, I made a commitment to the country in 2019, 2020, that the conversation in Kenya is going to change. It is not going to be about personalities. It is not going to be about positions. It is not going to be about tribes. It is going to be about issues. Today, that situation is true, that we are having a conversation about issues in our country. We must all be proud of ourselves that we have managed to elevate the debate in our country to the level of issues that affect all of us. I am very happy that we are having a conversation about jobs for our young people, about opportunities for business, about manufacturing, about taxation, about debt, and all the other things that are important to all of us. I make this statement to highlight the actions taken in response to the overwhelming public feedback in the recent days and to fulfill my commitment to continuously and effectively listen to the people of Kenya and to underscore my intention to always take public contributions in good faith, applying them to enrich policy making, governance, and government programs. Public debt is and continues to be a major point of engagement and conversation in Kenya. I have today appointed an independent task force to carry out a comprehensive forensic audit of our public debt and report to us in the next three months. This audit will provide the people of Kenya with clarity on the extent and nature of our debt, how public resources have been expended, and will also recommend 
proposals for managing our public debt in a manner that is sustainable and does not burden future generations. The consequence of withdrawing the finance bill is the reduction of our revenue targets by 346 billion. Over the last few days, our Treasury team has been assessing the adverse impact of either reducing the budget by 346 billion in full or borrowing the 346 billion in full. And cutting the entire amount in our assessment would significantly and drastically affect the delivery of critical government services while borrowing the whole amount in full will occasion a fiscal deficit by a margin that would have significant repercussions on many sectors, including our exchange rates and interest rates. We have since, after extensive consultations, struck a middle ground and we will be proposing to the National Assembly a budget cut of not the entire 346, but a budget cut of 177 billion and borrowing the difference. Whatever we are going to borrow the difference will increase our fiscal deficit from what I intended to be 3.3% of our GDP, it will now go up to 4.6% of GDP, still lower than last year, and will be used to fund some of our critical government services. We will use the, the money that we will borrow to protect funding for some of the critical areas that the people of Kenya have asked me to protect. They include hiring of junior secondary school teachers and medical interns, funding the milk stabilization program for our dairy farmers, reviving our stall road projects that are in many parts of Kenya, retaining the fertilizer subsidy program that has helped us manage our cost of living, settling the debt owed to farmers in our coffee sector, capitalizing the coffee cherry fund to support our farmers in that sector, enabling public owned sugar mills to pay outstanding debts to sugarcane farmers for their deliveries, additional funding for higher education, new funding model that was in our plan will now receive additional funding, settling arrears owed to counties, settling arrears for NGCDF, and settling arrears for our pensions. In keeping with the enhanced austerity measures we have committed to implement and align government expenditures within the budgetary implications of the withdrawal of the Finance Bill 2024, the following actions shall be taken with immediate effect towards the realization of the new budget. 47 state corporations with overlapping and duplicating functions will be dissolved, resulting in the elimination of their operational and maintenance costs, and their functions will be integrated into the respective line ministries. Staff currently employed by the affected corporations will be transferred to ministries and other state agencies within 
government. The decision to fill the position of chief administrative secretaries is hereby suspended. The number of advisors in government shall be reduced by 50% within the public service with immediate effect. Budget lines providing for the operations of the office of the first lady, the spouse of the deputy president, and the prime cabinet secretary will be removed. Similarly, the budget, the budget provisions for confidential budgets in various executive offices, including my own office, have been removed and the budget for renovations across government reduced by 50%. Henceforth, public servants who attain the retirement age of 60 shall be required to immediately proceed on retirement with no extensions to their tenure of service whatsoever. The purchase of new motor vehicles by the government is suspended for 12 months except for security agencies while a new policy on transport for public officers will be developed. All non-essential travel by state and public officers is hereby suspended. No state officer or public servant shall participate in public contributions or haram phase going forward. The Attorney General is hereby directed to prepare and submit legislation to this effect and develop a mechanism for structured and transparent contributions for public, charitable, and philanthropic purposes. These measures will be followed by changes in government that I will be making shortly. We are determined to carry out this and other interventions to improve the quality, efficiency, and transparency in serving the people of Kenya and ensure that citizens re receive maximum value for their resources from a public sector that prioritizes their welfare. I believe these changes will set out our country on a trajectory towards economic transformation, enabling us to achieve the strategic objectives of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda and deliver our commitment to radically enhance opportunities for all Kenyans and transform our country. Thank you very much. God bless you and God bless our great country, Kenya.